Good morning. I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Luang Prabang, Lao. It's a little before 6 a.m., but we're on our way to go to Mount Posi to climb up and get a sunrise view of the city. Uh, and then after that, there's this breakfast dish that I'm very looking forward to trying. And today is going to be a day we're going to do some sightseeing. We're going to eat some amazing Lao food. I'm going to give you a full tour of Luang Prabang and we're just going to see what we can discover and I'm going to share it all with you in this video right now. Luang Prabang is beautiful and quiet in the morning. I think this is where we're going to start the trail right here in the temple. All oh, feels good to get some morning exercise. You get to this mid platform here and there is an entrance fee. So we're just paying the entrance fee and we'll, we'll go up to the top. Okay, that took exactly eight minutes to climb to the top and I think we're here in perfect time for the sunrise. watched the sunrise until about 6.45. It's coming up, the sun is coming up really slowly, but it's gorgeous overlooking. The viewpoint from here is gorgeous because you get a view of the both rivers. Uh, the sun comes up from behind the mountains, uh, but yeah, the sun is still in the process of coming up, but we gotta we got roll, we gotta go because we need to be early to a breakfast spot. <laughs> and we are down. This is the main entrance where a lot of people come up, which is right across the street from Wat Mai. We're just walking down the street towards Wat Sen, and across the street there have been a number of people that have told me I have to try the khao soy there. I'm very looking forward to it, and I think we are, we are here. Pho khao soy. We're actually here a few minutes before they open, but you can see the wood burning behind there. That's the broths that will go into the soup. They have everything set up here. They have a little bit of an indoor section and then they have some outdoor tables. This is the perfect bench to sit on. This is the place you have to come to eat kasai. And the noodles are, they're, they're medium thickness, medium width. Uh, she blanches them in the hot water and then she puts them back into the bowl. Then she moves over to the seasoning station. She adds on all of the garnishes for the khao soy, including the, the minced meat, uh, slightly cured uh, minced pork relish mixture and all the herbs. And then she comes back over to the soup pot and she loads it up with the soup broth and serves it to you piping hot. Oh, it's steaming and looks incredible. It's a very, very clear broth, but in, when she's scooping it out of that, that broth pot, you can see there's some floating onions, there's some like whole sticks of herbs and, and flavor that's been meddling together in that broth. Uh, and then, yeah, the main component of this that makes up the flavor, and, and as you can see on the top of the bowl, is that kind of minced pork meat, tomato-y, chili, slightly oily mixture. Mmm, really extraordinarily soothing. And I'm just in love with these chili. They almost look like kind of like clusters, like little clumps of chili flakes from Luang Prabang. You see it at a lot of restaurants. It's a little bit spicy, but the flavor is fantastic. It, yeah, it's just delicious. This needs to go on my khao soy in, in abundance. Get that all stirred. There are some tomatoes in there. You can see that tomato skin. So I think that's what's making the, the majority of that pork uh, red. The coriander in there is delicious. Um, the the meat it does have a tomatoey flavor, and then those rice noodles they are very soft, and they're the type of noodles that just sort of they do sort of just disintegrate as you chew them. You, very little chewing is involved in eating those noodles, and I think I will just kind of go. Cr crush them up, there's some mint in here. Oh, there's some lime too. There's some long beans, there's some lao basil, some culantro. A lot of herbs in there. I'm gonna give it a squeeze of lime. And here's the culantro. The 
The mint is nice. The culantro has a similar flavor to cilantro, but a little stronger. Um, I like it with that squeeze of lime, and then you've got the bean sprouts in there. Yeah, that, oh man. It is a, what a soothing bowl of noodles. And it goes down so easily because the noodles are so soft. Oh, that immediately went up my nose a little bit. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, that'll wake you up. I love eating this pile of vegetables in the morning. And this vegetable, I'm not totally sure what it is, but to me it tastes like watercress. Yeah, I think it's some type of watercress. I love it. A really like slight bitter green taste. We saw them eating this at the market yesterday, but... And they have a big tray of it, so we're just gonna taste it. Thanks, man. Oh, there's some sticky strands. Noodles were excellent. And now finally for this snack, which is, I, th I think it is coconut based. Mm. Oh yeah, that is coconut. That has kind of a gummy texture to it. Mm. It is really dense, it is really heavy. The texture is halfway between batter and like a baked cake, but then just stuffed full of coconut. Just finished with that bowl of khao soy and now they have really filled up. They have a whole seating section on the inside, but if you can get the chef's counter seating and have the smell, the steam of the broth in your nose, in your face as you're eating, that brings it to the next level. That was great. Oh, what a, what a just fantastic, quiet Luang Prabang spot for khao soy in the morning. Walking around in the morning in Luang Prabang is just so peaceful, it's so quiet and calm, and so there's nothing that I could possibly think of that sounds better than taking a little walk along the river, but en route and actually going as fast as possible to this coffee shop. <laughs> and we've already been there before, uh, but they serve fantastic local coffee. They roast their own coffee, it's their, their local beans. Yeah, we need a cup of coffee. one of the top things to do when you're in Luang Prabang is just to walk around, to stroll around and to enjoy the incredible views of the river. And so you've got two rivers. The main gigantic river is the Mekong River. Welcome to Saffron Coffee Shop. They roast their own beans. They source the beans from this area of Luang Prabang. Uh, so the coffee is fresh. And yeah, I've been here already a couple of times. It's great coffee. I can't wait to have another cup. <laughs> Yeah, that's a seriously good cup of coffee, and I ordered the Americano, by the way. I can I can feel the energy coming back with every sip. Joel and I are, by the way, coffee uh, addicts. Yes, <laughs> and that's a great cup right there. Saffron, Luang Prabang. You, you gotta use two hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And what's cool is that they source the beans from this area directly from farmers, from their families, uh, to the coffee shop they roast it here. And if you walk around, you can see some profiles of some of the, the, the families that they support. Uh, yeah, if you love coffee, this is a place you're not going to want to miss when you come to Luang Prabang. Mm -hmm. We're just walking around and exploring. If you if you get back into the heritage, I mean, we're still in the center, the heritage area of Luang Prabang, but you can come down these side alleys. There's so many interesting things here. They are drying out sticky rice, uh, which I think will be cooked or fried into something, but they're, people are friendly. It's, again, it's so quiet, it's so peaceful. And we're just kind of looking around for a place to eat lunch. And we had a, I think we have a potential place where they're making all sorts of somtam, different types of salad. Uh, I think that's that's probably gonna be the candidate for lunch today. Ah, It's probably like leftover sticky rice and they form it into little patties. Uh, they dry it out and then they deep fry it in a crisp crisps up. It's wonderful. Completely crispy. You taste a little bit of the oil flavor. 
There might be a little bit of salt in there. Mama buys for you, man. There's just something so incredibly relaxing and satisfying about walking these heritage streets of old Luang Prabang. It's, it's really peaceful. I, I, okay, I've said that a few too many times today, but it really is. And it's beautiful, it's beautiful. The, the mix of the culture, the, the influence of the French architecture with the local Lao culture and architecture. I, I am at peak relaxation right now. Not a day can possibly go by in Luang Prabang without our daily dose of Sai Ua. It's so good here, the sausage is so good. As you walk by, you can actually smell the aroma of the meat and the herbs stuffed within there. Yeah. Oh, that one is really strong with the dill and the lemongrass. It's just absolutely sensationally delicious. Oh. Joel is just heavy breathing from that deliciousness. Sad. Mm. Oh, that end piece is even better because it's more crispy because you got more casing. Oh, it's it's so unbelievably flavorful. <laughs> They specialize in all sorts of green papaya salad and all sorts of pounded mixed mixed vegetable ingredients but they also have quite, quite a few different dishes on their menu including some different grilled meats. Oh, this, this is just excellent. This, this restaurant is just as relaxed as this entire area and the street is so friendly and relaxed. They are doing all the cooking over here but we got a, a seat underneath the awning of this abandoned building where there's a mango tree above us. I'm loving it already. Yes. I almost forgot we ordered I almost forgot we ordered this one. We ordered a kind of a mix and match of a meal. Most of the things are from the stall here, all of the different salads. Behind me there is a temple and they have a there's a, a metal rack with a bunch of meat drying. We also ordered that. Yeah, so then after it's, it looks like it's actually fried, then they pound it so you mm -hmm. can see the, the grains coming apart, but that tenderizes it as well. Look at that. Sun-dried pounded pork. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that marinade. Outside is hard, but then the marinade is covering the outermost layer. So you get the marinade first, then you chew a bit. It's awesome, delicious. You chew more, it's soft in the middle, and the flavor just keeps growing and growing. Wow. That's, yeah, that's so flavorful. The drying process, mm. that, that increases the flavor. This one is the tam kapun, which is the, it's the rice, kind of slightly fresh, uh, it's the slightly fermented but fresh rice noodles. I know that's kind of ironic, but that's kind of true at the same time. Mm -hmm. Cool and refreshing mm. and fishy. Those tomatoes act like little, little small, kind of like cherry tomatoes, but they, they burst with that slightly sour, acidic, seedy tomato flavor and texture. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, cashew nut tree or cashew fruit tree leaves. Uh, when we were just walking down the street earlier this morning, she was boiling them up in a pot and we asked her, what's that? And she's really, really nice. She actually has a, a little shop across the street uh, and she doesn't sell this, but she said she would give us a bowl to try. So she was really nice and friendly. So she called this dish soup pot, but it's... Yeah, that, I guess that would be the name of it. The one of, maybe sort of the generic name of it because it could get, I think it could get more specific if you mentioned that it's cashew tree leaves. That is superb. It's, it, it's, you can taste the nuttiness of, I think those are sesame seeds. Maybe there's some peanuts in there too. You've got the leaves which have, uh, 
this kind of slight crispness to them, but at the same time they're blanched, they're boiled, so they're they're like wilted leaves. You can pretty much guarantee that she just picked these leaves from some tree right down the road, and that's awesome. I love it. This is the nam, which is the fermented soured pork um, with a variety of different pieces. There's probably some skin, skin, some face, some actual meat. There's some chilies mixed within there, and you can see that that's just glistening. Mm. Oh. Oh. This is just one of the greatest things of this entire region of the world. Soured pork. That one just melts in your mouth. It, it does start to dissolve as soon as it hits your tongue. And spicy when you get a couple chilies folded in there. And you've got the, the mm -hmm. different textures of the, the fat and skin of the pork in there. We got, also got a salad with cucumber. And again, she sliced it the same way as the, the papaya. So in long, long strips. And then this is all cu cucumber, there are tomatoes in here. Mm -hmm. mm. That almost tastes like, mm. like fish pickles. And then finally we have a proper plate of Luang Prabang style green papaya salad. And this is signature classic Luang Prabang style, the way they cut the papaya, the long, thin, slices. Uh, there's chilies in here that she pounded up. There's uh, the Lao olive in here. There are tomatoes and then quite a lot of garlic and the fish sauce. You can see that murky dressing as well. Mm. Mm. Just the balance, the balance of flavor. Um, it's a little bit, it's, it, it's a little bit sweet for me, but I like I like the balance of flavor. The garlickiness comes in really nicely. The chilies, the tomatoes again. The papaya, as opposed to the cucumber, is a little more leathery mm -hmm. in texture. But then the addition of the Lao olive, that that's the game changer. It's like a almost like fermented fruit taste. Yeah, mm. it's great. And this one's spicier too. Yeah, I got a lot of chilies in that way. Oh yeah. Oh, do you remember the name of this one, Joel? Oh, this one is the mukbon, mukbon, which is this vegetable. Ying just solved a mystery <laughs> for us. I didn't know what vegetable this was, but we had this dish a couple times, but in stew form, which is called opon, opon, and it is uh, taro leaves stew. So now this is the the mok version, the the pounded up and then stuck into a banana leaf and roasted version of taro leaves. Mm. Mm hmm Yes. That tastes like lao lao. Oh. Mm. Yes. I love it. I love it. And that's like a... It kind of has a pasty texture though because it's been probably pounded and condensed and sort of pureed before it's been roasted. Have fun. Breeze. Do the, the khao pun. That one is one of my favorites. My other favorite is the, the cashew leaf. It's so good. But everything, everything is great. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a winner. That was delicious food. And just the combination, we sourced a few of the dishes from down the street as well. Oh, and the lady who hooked us up with that bowl of the, the cashew leaf salad is right here under this mango tree. Huge thank you to her. That was, that was actually one of the highlights of my, the meal for me. After lunch, we went back to the hotel. I changed into pants because we're walking to what is one of the most well-known temples in Luang Prabang. Right, there's a 20,000 kip entrance fee and it's called Wat Siang Tong. And this is almost at the end of the peninsula where the other river joins the Mekong River. We're almost at that, that section. The temple complex was built between 1559 and 1560. And from then up until now, it still remains one of the most important temples in Laos. What I especially like in here are the, the gold reliefs 
on a black and, and uh, red maroon background, uh, telling many different stories, I'm sure. This is very cool to see the Nagas on a ceremonial barge. For dinner tonight, we're at a restaurant which is actually just on the backside of the temple, so it's called Ran Siang Tong. We actually looked at a couple restaurants around here and looked at the menu, and what I liked about this menu is they especially serve a lot of Mekong river fish. So we ordered a, a mix of different dishes, but yeah, it looks like it's gonna be some pretty good food here. And the view here is spectacular. They have, they have a, an indoor, well, they have a section across the street where you can sit, but they also have a section right along the river, right along the Mekong River, underneath a tent. This is an ultimate chill spot. Big soup. Gang pla. Correct answer. <laughs> very, very excited for this meal because we got some, they have some dishes that I've been wanting to try and he also has some unique dishes including there's this one dish, uh, a jail, that he told us if we haven't eaten this, we haven't yet arrived to Luang Prabang. Jiao Kipa. And he said it's a mix of fish eggs from a Mekong, Mekong fish. Fish eggs, there's some, some other interiors in there as well. And then you can see chilies, you can see green onions in there. That looks stunner. Mm. <clears throat> oh, Oh, mm. oh, I mark. Oh, that's that is stunning. Oh, you can feel the little like pellets of fish eggs, but what comes in nicely is the dry chili flavor. Mm. Yeah, that has like a mellow heat that sort of builds as you keep chewing. Wow. You've got lemongrass in there. That's that's actually remarkable. I can't even really start to analyze that flavor. It's like a. That is, that's seriously remarkable. It is, well, this is the dish. He said, if we haven't eaten this, we haven't arrived to Luang Prabang. So now we can say, I, now I can say I've been to Luang Prabang for the first time, for the first day, for the first moment. He's, he's totally right. If I had missed this jail, I would have regretted it my entire life. That's, <laughs> that is a flavor. That, it's so good. It's so incredibly good. I mean, the, the combination of the ingredients, the taste of it, it will blow your taste buds. That, that, that's superior. Wow. Next up, we got a whole plate of kai pen, and this is a Mekong, some kind of a river weed that grows, kind of like algae or like a seaweed, similar to a seaweed. Oh, it's fantastic. It's deep fried, so it's crispy, it's kind of oily. You get those toasted sesame seeds on top. Whoa. Next up, we got some lab made with a uh, Mekong fish as well. You can see all the herbs in there, the cilantro, the green onions, the chilies, and then just little cubes of fish. And he said we can put that into lettuce, um, which makes a good wrapper for it, or eat with sticky rice, whatever you please. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm. So much lemongrass in there. And this has like kind of a, kind of a woody flavor, or the, the fish, is really soft and tender. You taste it, it, you taste the chilies in there, the fresh chilies. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. Excuse me, actually this is called goi on the menu. Goi pla or goi pa. And um, they're, they're quite similar to lab, but it's a little bit different. They have some, that chunk. Wow. Yep. Something that's great about river fish is their fat content. You can just see the, the fish oils floating around in that broth. And you can see how fatty that fish is. That looks, that looks delicious. 
Yes. Yeah, that's as pure, that's as wonderful as it looks. I mean, it just it's just a clean, pure fish broth. Oh, yeah, man, that's a broth of wonders again. That's the star of the show. It's unbelievably good. It's, it's just like condensed fish egg, sesame, chili oil. All of them just combined into a single dipping beauty. That guy. I love that watercress. That sauce is just spicy and sour. This is one of those restaurants where you just eat bite by, I mean slowly eat bite by bite because of the ultimate relaxation and then all of a sudden it's dark and it's been over an hour since we've been sitting here. That meal was fantastic. Okay, but we gotta head out. We're, we're gonna stop next at the night market uh, just to walk around for a little while. We walked over to the Luang Prabang night market. This is a nightly market. They especially have a lot of fabric and clothes and you can buy souvenirs here, but it's it's really a pleasant evening market just to walk around, stroll around and enjoy the evening. But the main reason, well, our hotel is located just just like right right down the street from the market. But the main reason I've been coming here every single night in Luang Prabang for is You have about 89 different cups full of fruit of choices that you can order, but I have I have realized my my favorite combination avocado and passion fruit Oh, what a combination you get the creaminess from the avocado yet you get the tartness the sourness from the the passion fruit now the day is complete. It was another outstanding day in Luang Prabang. We've eaten so much delicious food, all the way starting from the khao soi. Lunch was delicious. Dinner was a mind-blowing meal. And again, dishes that I've never tried before. The people who are friendly are, contribute to why it's such a beautiful place. The scenery, the river, the food, everything all combined together is what makes Luang Prabang such a pristine destination in this world. And, uh, I, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed walking around and eating today. I will leave all the information of what we did in the description box below so you can check that out. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and also make sure you click subscribe and click the little bell icon so that you get notified of future videos that I publish. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from, good night from Luang Prabang. I will see you on the next video. And go to one of the most well-known temples in Luang Prabang. I almost lost my banana. <laughs> I was about to.